that sounds means we're back on the clock. None better on the clock than the old, probably the biggest waster of clock time, Big Co. <laughs> Loves to eat the clock. Anybody who's been in a draft of Big Co is like, Jesus, just make a pick, please. He's, he's there's, there's going down every somebody's, avenue. Somebody's just laying on the Z's on, <laughs> on the oh, chemo. <laughs> that is That makes me laugh. So if, if first time it happened, it and really you don't give a shit. Pissed me off. But so you, you got to do. You shouldn't. Couple second, it's your time. Second and third time the dude laid on the Z's, I just laughed. It was pretty funny. It's a good joke. What's funny is now that I'm a couple years into the the FFPC leagues, they give you monster clocks to deal and wheel and deal and make as you there trace. Should be. As, as you should Unless have. you can get everyone in one room. Right, right, right. Which right. is, unless it's a home league, it's very unlikely. The one room draft scenario is the, is the most fun. But opposite of that is lots of time to wheel and deal and send trade offers in. I've gotten this one league in FFPC. These guys are so worn out with me hanging out on the clock. Their boys don't even respond to my trade offers anymore. It's, <laughs> it's sad, but true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so at 1-7. We'll, we'll give you a fresh crack to restart. That was your crack. At 1-7 <laughs> with the seventh pick in the first round, who I'm, you got? I'm going Ronald Jones. Rojo. Rojo. Coolest uh, nickname. Go. Coolest nickname in the draft. I've we've seen uh, we've seen Ronald Jones go into into one three area. We've seen Ronald Jones come in this. It, it is absolutely physically physically possible to get Ronald Jones at one seven one eight in your rookie draft. Somebody might tons love of him. fluctuation like you were tons saying. of fluctuation in those back. Th- actually, you know two three four five six seven eight gets crazy. So with this one seven, I probably. Uh, this is Kevin's team. Again, we said it last episode when we did the first one through six. It was, you know, it's pretty much not roster. That's you know, his team name, Kevin. Dependent. <laughs> Maybe you want um, to pick that up a little has bit. Has nothing to do with the rosters. We're going to go best fa- best player available here. And to me, that's Ronald Jones. He did, Kevin's team does need running backs, but he needs a little bit of everything. So um, he does. Coming into the draft, obviously, Ronald Jones is drawing some comparisons with his breakaway speed to Jamal Charles and stuff like that. And it's just the, it's, it's the hair. Well, <laughs> and the number, and the number, I, twenty-five, I've, and the hair, I, and the small stature. What's what's first of all? It's funny to me about Ronald Jones is to me. I was I watch a, a what I do watch of rookie tape and stuff is on my computer. And we came over to Casey's house a couple weeks ago, and he sh- had some uh, a highlight tape of Ronald Jones up on his like sixty inch screen on his TV, and I was like, Jesus, he looks a lot bigger, faster, stronger, and fa- <laughs> he looks bigger on the he, big TV. He, he looks awesome on the big <laughs> screen. Um, so I, I mean, he, dude flashes for sure. He's obviously, he's a sprinter, you know, he's, you know, world-class athlete kind he's of player, sprinter. but I was just thinking that I don't think you can call, I don't mean, I don't think you can go bringing in Jamal Charles into this argument. I mean, Jamal Charles is anybody who weighs 205 pounds automatically gets paid compared to Jamal Charles. Right. It's, it's annoying. Well, then you have. Dreadlocks and and you wear twenty five. Yeah, I get it, I get it, but all everything's lining take, up. To take nothing away from Ronald Jones, he could be three quarters of the player that Jamal Charles was and be a, a pro bowler. You know, like Jamal Charles is freaking one of the best running backs ever. So I don't want to put him on that level. He's so freaking good. He is freaking good. <laughs> so all right, so one of the biggest RB situations pre draft was the Tampa Bay Bucks backfield. Okay, yeah. we all know they got a good, you know, a, a solid young. Proven yet unproven quarterback gunslinger and gunslinger is the best gunslinger Jameis. He's if 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 nothing else, the defense has to back up a little bit because he'll throw it all over the field. They got awesome Mike Evans. They got some solid tight ends. They got Godwin, this beast, and they got field stretching Deshaun Parts Jackson. Parts and pieces are all there. They got everything you want except for a good need running an back. RB. Need a running back. So it couldn't have gotten better running back situation. I don't think I don't think there was really a better insert starting running back here than. Than the Bucks coming into the draft. Well, hold on. Let me let me so let me stop you there because I looked into the Bucks a little bit. These guys were 26th in rushing attempts last year and 27th in rushing yards. So it's not like it's the greatest situation. Well, if they were had a good into. running back, they wouldn't have drafted a running back, Jason. Uh, I mean, the the line situation is is <laughs> they've had a ton of injuries on that line. And that that could be part of the the, the issue there. And then the other That's part true. of the issue was that maybe there wasn't 
you know, the, the line best was... running back situation in the league. I did like what Peyton Barber did at the end of the season. You started to see sure, a little bit of life in the running game there. Well, they thought they had Doug Martin, and that didn't work out. Right. And then they thought they had Jaquiz Rogers, and that didn't work out. And then Peyton Barber might have looked okay for a couple games at the end of the season. But truth be told, they don't have a running back. That's why it's a good and they situation. Had a, they had a banged-up line that they had to move pieces all over the place. But So it was, I, it was the 17th-ranked. Line. I think overall, it could be better, but it was definitely bad. In, than as <laughs> advertised, what you just said: twenty sixth and twenty seventh in attempts and yards and ball. I, w- I would agree with that. And, and but they're ranking seventeenth. That's not the worst. But it was the run blocking that was really where they were lacking. They were the the, the running backs averaged the, the seventh fewest yards before contact with one point two. So that's it's a small number there. Okay, so maybe when I say one of the I, I say best plug and play running back situations, maybe they don't have like the offensive line of the titans that we talked about like that casey and i just talked about for you know deon lewis to come in there and derrick henry but they have the threats that stretch the defense out they have mike evans they, they have had the godwin they pieces. have deshaun jock jackson they have good tight ends they have a quarterback sure. that'll throw it all over the and, field and and there's no competition virtually that's true is, he should right. be given as all the opportunity of, in part the of world. exactly i i, I would agree opportunity with that. should be there Obviously, talent should be there with Ronald Jones. And they did make some attempts with the offensive line. They brought in Ryan Jensen from the Baltimore Ravens. He was the ninth best center right, per top, PFF top last year. Per PFF. They, they tried to address it in the draft. They drafted Alex uh, Kappa out of Humboldt State, I believe, is right. where he came from. A great Northwestern Athletic Conference Player of the mm-hmm. Year. Mm-hmm. Um, first team all-conference all four years. Played uh, one year of offensive line in high school. So this is a nice – obviously, Humboldt State is – you know, known not, for other things, right? Sure, the Golden <laughs> Triangle, um, or the Green Triangle, however you want to look at it. But a Division Two All American, a, a, a pretty solid player who hasn't been playing that long, and it could be proved to be six six three oh five. Could be a really solid player for him in the third round. That which they desperately need at least one more player right. along this offensive line. And they've been working him out at guard and tackle, so they're seeing where he feels there. Getting that center from getting Jensen that'll that'll allow him to push uh, Ali Marpet back to guard which is a more natural position for and him. they got that awesome right tackle demar uh, this, dotson the the right doc dotson. demar dotson is a is a stud it just consistently the bright spot of this line seventh best tackle uh graded out in the run in uh overall the run blocking area was not great just like the rest of this line he uh, tours pcl in november so that was yeah. a bummer after having this really awesome year, but he, he should be back healthy for training camp, so that's good. So I it's, don't, it's looking up. Right. I don't think Marpet's a terrible player. He was playing kind of out of position, which he's been asked to do because this line's been banged up for a few years in a row now. You get him back in position. Like you said, they got Jensen. Um, Donovan Smith, the former second-round pick, is not been great, and he, he's a real weak spot for him uh, on this line. And then you have J.R. Sweezy, who's right could be the right guard. Um He's had his ups and downs. Not a great year last year, but he's proved to be a, a serviceable player. That's not like, oh my god, this guy's so bad. He's just a complete liability. Yeah, Sweezy's been around a, a block a, while, a couple times. He's, he's right also here. been asked to play around a little bit the last few seasons, I believe. So I'm, they're making attempts, and they do have good pieces around them, and they got this gunslinger. So I, I mean, I I really like Rojo. I mean, I'm a huge fan of this kid. I've, I, I liked him pre-draft, and I just but. But for people to come out after the draft and be like, oh, my God, this was the best spot ever. I'm like, I, I mean, I don't know if it was the best spot ever, but, I mean, it's it's certainly good enough, I guess. I think it's m- mostly based op- on opportunity, opportunity. And, and what the general consensus of people around the league is, is there's nobody else there for or people well, around, not the league, but g- people, gen- the general po- population of people saying, well, there's there's nobody else there. So it's great for right. op- opportunities, well, King. The, and and, and the, when you look at the highlights of this guy, it's – He's a flashy player. Exactly. Well, the combination of just what you just said, the, the combination of the fact that the backfield's relatively empty. There, you know, Doug Martin's out of there, and you got just unproven guys, and Charles Sims is regular. Charles Sims is He's back. Third Brought him back. back on the low. Okay. So the combination of the opportunity of the running back room that is there that for Ronald Jones to step right into and be lead dog, and the fact that the pass catchers that they have can limit the focus, the defense's focus on the running back. Those two things together creates that – situation that I think Ronald Jones steps into and and just it's can be you know it's 
fairly salivating for a running right. back's opportunity coming in. You're like, you got, you got the, you got the weapons for the defense not to be able to focus on either or now. And then because last year, let's face it, they didn't have, they weren't scaring anybody Nobody on the ground, was, right. which is it could, kind of goes towards those 26th and 27th rankings that you go to there. So, and so now, and. DJ Moore's on the board. Royce Freeman's on the board when I'm looking in this right range right here at 1 7. And Ronald Jones, obviously, Royce Freeman did it all at Oregon. He did it all. His, his numbers were obvious and they were there for years. So he's, he's a player. Ronald, Royce Freeman is a legitimate running back. But Ronald Jones' is top end speed, breakaway plays, when you watch that highlight tape, it's the upside of what's the, going on with Ronald the, Jones. The, if, like I said, like and there's, there's no. Devonte Booker in his way. This is all true too, but like Ronald Better Jones, that high end upside. If it hits, Ronald. If it hits, Ronald Jones could be a better player if, for your fantasy team than Royce Freeman. That's why I took him here, and I wasn't looking at wide receiver because you guys know me and, and Ro- you know how I roll. Royce Freeman again is not. He's. I think. I feel like he's very safe. He's. He's was a pretty consistent player outside of that 16 year uh, at Oregon, but you don't have the home run upside that. Right, make your day in one play, kind of that Rojo is going to offer you, and there's not much competition here in Tampa and, and, Bay. And well, obviously, we'll get to Royce Freeman here shortly, and we'll, I got yeah. some great things to say about Royce Freeman. I'm not here to beat him up. I'm just telling you about who I was looking at yeah. and why I took Ronald Jones at one sure. seven. And I don't. Th- I mean, some pe- I have seen Royce Freeman get taken in front of a couple of these guys that's already off the board. So some people love Royce Freeman because of his body of work and his ability, his versatility. Versatility. When you can, when you can catch and you can run and you can block and you can protect the quarterback, you're going to be on the field. And there's a chance that the Broncos have him in there as a as a three down back all the time. He's like a Chevy Tahoe. There's <laughs> nothing sexy about him, but everybody <laughs> wants that car. They don't. They like driving it around. They don't but necessarily it's, it's, know how to drive. It's it not all an the import. Time, it's not. Doesn't go real it's fast. Hard to park, but <laughs> you can fit a bunch of stuff in it. It looks good. It, the, the style stays all right for a while. <laughs> yeah, they had long runs with the body Royce style. Freeman is a Chevy Tahoe. I can feel the the YouTube name coming on here. But back back to Rojo. I, I didn't want to knock this pick at all. I love the pick. I'm I'm all for it here. At the Rojo guys are going to scream at you and say, "How can you let him go to one seven? But that's and I the, get that. The, the Rashad Penny guys are going to scream. How does he? You know, anybody who there's there's a Somebody loves each and every one of these running backs, yeah. as we've said many times before. So if you're a Rojo guy and you get your hands on him at 1-7, you, if you're a strong enough Rojo guy, you've been trying to trade trade up for the last two or three picks to take him. So that's just one of those things. You sit back at 1-7, and, and you're happy because you're going to get a good player no matter what. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I love about Rojo is obviously you love the game-breaking skill, and I don't think he gets enough credit for that game-breaking ability due to the, quote, bad combine that he had. I mean – this cat ran a four six while pulling his hamstring, but they wanted that like that's something special to me. Yeah. To be able to pull your hamstring, still run a four six. But if he'd have put up some ridiculous forty and, and crushed the rest of the combine, right. you, like the whole narrative would be it would different. be different. I feel like you it can would be maybe like get it's him high, here. It's one. high for some people, but I feel like it would be high for right. more well, people. And uh, like I don't tell people to go look at highlight tape because we, we everybody in that listens They've to already us, seen it. Every, well, obviously, but everybody <laughs> that listens to us knows that we try to stress that actually watching the games and not just the highlights. But if you will go pull up Ronald Jones highlight tape, in his highlights, it's more than just hit a hit a wide open hole or catch a screen pass out in space and run like he's breaking tackles oh man and making he well, I his didn't highlight finish, right? tape so is like, full of really good plays not just like a home run right, that right, were, right. he so didn't it's not, just blow the doors off of people because they couldn't catch him he broke tackles got tripped up this was not a good up. usc offensive line last right year. he he's he, he he showed good balance and the ability to to get off of a shoe, shoestring tackle when somebody else may have fallen down and then take it and so, I mean, he's he showed some Rashad Penny and some things that yeah, you he's, know he's well, not he's not just a pri- a speed back that relies just on speed, in my opinion. Right. No, and and he's I'll finish my tough. thought of, of when I was like, I not only like him obviously because of the breakaway ability, but it's it's the toughness. He plays bigger than a two hundred and five pound back. Like he plays tougher than that. He he Agreed. he knows when to cut his losses and and to get a couple to grind out a extra couple more. yards. This dude forced 58 tackles, missed tackles last year. That's second most in the NCAA. Like, that's a strong number there. That's a strong it's, number. It's not only hard to tackle him, it's hard to, like, get a hold of him at all. Like, Wrangle he's just so sliv- slippery. Um, and and I, I like, the game speed is super, super fast, but he doesn't always just try to get out to the right. outside. He's down to grind it out. And so, like, I really like... I really like the game of, of this kid. I, I do, too. And, I, and I, I love the fact, like, he, he'll, he'll grind... And I, I just 
my biggest takeaway was is that you ju- he just needs a sliver. Yeah. He just needs a little bit of a sliver. A little right. crease or a crevasse. Uh, right, and it's gone. And I think Crevice. they're obviously the hands and the catching was, is questionable because you just didn't see a lot of it. Right. But I, I saw you watch well, some interviews with him. He's like, oh, I didn't drop a ball. I right. didn't drop any ones that they threw to me. Right. So Which I don't a, know if that's accurate. He's but. a great interview. Yeah. Um, they asked him, like, how does it feel about finally arriving in the NFL? And he's like, well, I haven't arrived yet. I haven't done anything. Right. I love that answer. And then they were like, yeah. well, they started asking him about his lack of production in the passing game. And he's like, I mean, I caught every ball they threw at me, mm-hmm. right? Which I couldn't, like which, you, I couldn't find a stat to back that up. But I mean, I didn't see him drop anything. This is really is the case. what's going to make him be very sought after or not sought after, in my opinion, is whether or not the hands and the catching and and the receiving ability is all encompassed in in what he can do because that's really what you're looking for. I mean, you look pretty for handsy that all around back, and even if let, let's say he fails as a as a workhorse back, you're hoping that. You'll see some hands catching and some and right. some good catching out of this and guy. And it's like you, you said, it's use one him as play, that kind of guy. One play can right. make your whole day. I think I got to take this guy. Still, I got to take him over over Rashad Penny. I'll take him at one six. Yeah. So so time has time has uh, passed passed, and we're in a, in a couple weeks. in a couple weeks. Anybody since moved Rojo kind of up or down since we maybe made these picks or since the NFL draft happened? Like you you like him over. Uh, over Penny, Big Co. I mean, I would probably I would take Penny over Jones just because of what I think is going. Obviously, the ultimately, just the volume that the Seahawks are going to give him, the the un, undeniable volume, and the fact that they say they're adamantly saying three down back for him, they're going to run it with him. Seahawks lie him. all the time. They, well, um, but also, and then the and then the and then the Russell Wilson threat. Like you know, if he if the threat of him running yeah. it, that 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 uh, dual threat Winston quarterback, the ability Brinson no, Brinson is not. It's even just a close different. To it's Russell a different. Wilson. It's two t- totally different quarterbacks here. There's one guy who is uh, very active with his legs and uses his mind in the right way and not i know Jameis ha- has oh, an extremely high football iq but it's not always there between the ears and oh, russell James wilson is scramble. always dialed in to knowing exactly what he needs to do for his team yeah, what's Jay- best for his team he's never he's not going to do anything stupid like what Jameis winston does before games or during games yeah. when he's pushing people in the back and doing also russell wilson's never going to put his team in that russell position eating his fingers like they yeah. were rich J- Jameis winston can scramble like he, you've seen, yeah. we've all seen the highlights of him. You know that play where he's backed up against the goal line and ran around. And th- I mean, dude can scramble when when there's somebody in his face. But like Russell Wilson is a magician, and so that his, his ability, he's he can run it. Like Jason, uh, you know, um, um, Jameis Winston can scramble, but Russell Wilson can run the football. So uh, that that threat alone ties up enough defensive attention that Penny. I think would be we'll see a lot more open or open windows to be able to hit. Now I, I don't obviously I don't believe that the Seahawks have the offensive weaponry out there on the outsides that the Bucks do. So it's well that just it, speaks to more of what Russell Wilson does for that squad. Absolutely, and it speaks to more of what kind of volume that Penny could get as sure. versus versus uh, Rojo here. So I would take Penny over Rojo, but I I like Rojo for this pick at one seven. I'm not upset if I'm at one seven and I see Rojo. Well, to wrap this thing up, you know, I did, I did a little digging into uh, the offense of the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they were twenty fourth in red zone percentage, which is never good. Like that's piss poor. There's only a handful more teams that were worse. <laughs> um, they 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 crushed it in the air with fourth in total yardage uh, in total, but they just kept sputtering in the red zone. Just to put it in perspective here, Jimmy G had more completions inside the twenty than Jameis Winston had. Like he only, he only played, played five games, five or six games. Yeah, it's impressive. Um, Jameis is better in, in in total yards in that in that closed down area, but completion percentage um, is is Jimmy G's way. And then the same thing, kind of inside the ten, Jimmy G's got more completions than Jameis Winston inside that area. In which, five games, right? Which makes absolutely zero sense. Twenty um, seventh in total rushing uh, yards just not great yeah. Just this this offense was good it didn't have any problem moving around but for whatever reason when they got into this red zone area it just wasn't happening for them which is the reason probably why when we talked about the titans 
last week we were saying how the new offensive coordinator is coming in here and saying yardage really doesn't matter. What matters at the end of the day is getting an explosive play that ends in the, into the end zone. The points are what matter. True. Anybody can True. get yardage. So that's what we're looking for the Bucks to do right here to take a step forward um, and, and be an offense that is converting these yards into points here. True. And hopefully Rojo can give them that extra boost to get over that hump well hopefully what you're looking for if you're the tampa bay buccaneers is you're looking for rojo to take some pressure off of Jameis. i right. mean because at the end of the day let's face it it all is going to run through the quarterback anyway so you can have all the weapons in the world but if you can't utilize them to help out us fantasy gamers because that's what really matters right you know so if if Jameis doesn't get back to pepper and mike evans mike evans owner is going to be upset if Jameis owners don't throw it to the tight ends, the tight end owners are going yeah. to be upset. If Rojo's not working out, it all kind of might you know, sputter like it did last year because without a decent threat of the running game, you have to be a superb quarterback to make things happen through the air if you have no threat of the right. run. And I'm not saying that Jameis can't become a superb quarterback, but he's not yet, and he's very, very young, and he, has, he did things as a rookie quarterback that no other rookie had done outside of Peyton Manning. Jameis splashed onto the scene and he did some great things. And you and while he was doing those great things, you had to say, okay, well, throw away all those interceptions because we're just glad he takes chances. Right. How many times do you say, you know, well, I just want the young quarterback to take a chance and keep his head up when he throws a pick. Jameis regressed a little bit last year. It is time to come back. He's got a, he's got some new toys. He's got some returning toys that are awesome. OJ Howard's coming into his second year, and he looks like freaking Calvin Johnson out there from the tight end spot. Yeah, you you got some things. They signed they they, they signed your boy Cameron Brake, Jameis Winston. They did that for you. You love Cameron Brake. They kept him in town for you. Is that Jameis's boy? Or your boy? That's Jameis's boy. I think he's that's my Dirk boy. Cutter's boy because he likes to. He's my boy because Jameis the two tight loves ends him. over there. You got to you got to take a step forward here if you're Jameis Winston and if you're the Tampa Bay Bucks, you're looking for your quarterback well, to move forward. It's just like I said. I mean, he he regressed some, but they still were they still did well moving the ball. It just got into these red zones and sputtered out. I think that comes down to being like I just. Like I said, I know Jameis has it between the years from a football IQ perspective of like when you talk about diagnosing. Sure. Well, called, there's execution. But, but it gets right. harder. It's, and then, it's yeah. then getting into those situations and being able to just put it all down, take all the pressure off and and convert this play. And right. Jameis just hasn't shown that ability to me yet. And that's what it's going to take for Jameis and the Bucks. Really, they're, he, the Bucks are going to go as Jameis goes. Yeah, no and doubt. That's what it's going to take. That's what I was trying to say. Yep. All right. Well, let's uh, let's take a quick break here. Grab another beer. We'll be back with pick one eight for your pleasure. 